Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody. Zidrasi to our Bulgarian fans. Ni <laughs> <laughs> hao. And ni hao. It's Jake and Aaron here again with Wired Unplugged episode 42. And you might be wondering, hang on a minute, why did you just shout out Bulgaria? Well, if you're from Bulgaria, you know, don't you? Because we're in the top 20 video game podcasts <laughs> in the whole country. So I just wanted to say hello to our Bulgarian listeners, yeah? And yeah. Uh, Nihao uh, to represent China, where we also... China. We, we, I think we're in like the, the top 200. The top yeah. percent, Al. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Take that, Pitbull. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> uh, Going up in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's I, just, just, I, I, I just like that there are people in China just being like, what are these... What's this guy from Birmingham and this Welsh guy? Yeah. What, what are they saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I love that. They're yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. So, so shout out yeah. to Bulgaria and whatever. Um, and China. And China and, and everywhere yeah. else as well. China massive. Uh, yeah. It's good to be back. Uh, I've had a bit of a house move for anyone watching. If you're not watching the Wide Unplugged podcast, you can go on YouTube uh, where there's a whole visual accompaniment to the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm often in different locations, <laughs> which has become a bit of a meme. But I've just moved house. I haven't quite decorated it. Um, we'll find out what's behind this door in a little bit. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I got a, a special guest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, it's our first one recording in December as well. So a happy ho, ho, ho. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, it's literally worth the price of admission, which is free, everybody. You don't have to really pay. To go on YouTube just to see, Aaron's got a Christmas jumper on, you know, which is actually wicked. I've come, as usual, just dressed all in black, but uh, Aaron is goth, wearing a goth an, life. Goth life you, you've it? been enjoying Wednesday on Netflix, haven't you? I, do you know what? I have been enjoying Wednesday on Netflix. My daughter's smashed it twice. Literally, you know twice. when you're a kid, you could just... Yeah, when, when we were kids, you couldn't binge watch, could you? But you yeah, know, you have to rewind. Yeah, you exactly. Rewind. You have to get a VHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a videotape for the young listeners. And um, and I tell you what, yeah, if you were a kid though, and you could smash Pokemon, binge it on Netflix, you definitely would have, wouldn't you? Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I am. I'm but, actually doing that right now. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching like this, like complete, like reality TV trash about like cocktail making called the Ultimate Drinks Master. That sounds cool. It is actually quite sick, you know. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to let us know what you're watching on uh, lots of the video on demand <laughs> services, you can email in at unplugged.wiredproductions.com or you can tweet us, Wired P, which is like the general Wired sort of umbrella account, or we've got our own verified, we did pay £8 for it, Elon Musk, um, official account, which is at Wired Unplugged. And you know it's official because when John Cena follows you, John you Cena follows us yeah, on yeah, there yeah. recently. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So, Hi, John. Um, it's a, this is a weird one for us, actually, because the biggest thing in the gaming news this week uh, at the time of recording is that tomorrow is the Game Awards. But because we're recording early, we're going we're to break it down next there's week. There's a reason we're recording early as well. We usually record before this goes out, obviously. But um, our, 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 fearless, our fearless Curtis is a little unwell yeah. at the moment as well. You might know our valiant editor, Curtis, from uh, the many shouts outs we give Great him. Great guy. And, uh, so such a good guy. He is a good guy. We wish him all the best and a good recovery, especially <laughs> me. No, uh, we've got, we've got, um, yeah, we've we've got a bit of a deadline, so we're, we're missing the game awards. It's also one at a ridiculous time. If you're in the UK, Jeff Keighley doesn't give you much love because it, it's like, um, I think the proper show starts at something silly, doesn't it? Like, is That's it like midnight? You know, I beyond think, midnight. I think because there's like a forty minute pre show thing. Yeah, ex- <clears throat> exactly. So it's it's quite a late one, and it's a bit of an yeah. extravaganza, isn't it? So it's one for the Friday morning, isn't it? That you watch it, you know, wake up with yeah. a cup of coffee and watch it. There was there, there was going to be a, a piece in the, uh, you know, the news was stole from the internet a bit later on. Uh, that was about oh Jeff Keighley has said that you know he's feeling good about the game wars and that Jeff Keighley has said that it's going to be a more streamlined affair with thirty to forty announcements. Yeah. And you know, taking this, but I realized that by the time this went out, it wouldn't mean anything. <laughs> it wouldn't mean anything. Right, yeah. <laughs> but it does it does mean that next week <clears throat> we're yeah. going to be talking about all of those announcements and we're going to talk about one or two things that we know are coming in the yeah. game wards in this as well that I'm actually quite excited about and had slipped off my radar. I'm, yeah. I'm quite All hyped. right. Yeah, we'll bring that up in a I'm little quite bit. I have never I, said that in my life. Even yeah, but I am quite hyped. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time of year hyped. to be hyped, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so yeah, right. We're, we're gonna we're gonna just start the proceedings with uh, your weekly dose of wire propaganda um, because it's always battleful despite the year. Um, let's begin. Jingle, please. Wire propaganda! 
propaganda. I really like that one. That's good, isn't it? I say that it's about all of them. I'm like, do you it's know what? Like when you go to like a supermarket and you have like free samples and stuff and you go, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, and then everything impresses you. It's like that with the propaganda. 41 yeah. episodes in. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> What's happening in the world of Wyatt this week? Aaron, what going on? <laughs> so this is something, this is something that we preempted last yeah. week, but it has now come true. Um, the game wars are coming up. Lots of games are going to be announced and... The big thing about that is you're not going to be able to play any of them for some time. Um, we have, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got the remedy to that. So we have uh, mm. demos available, brand new shiny demos available on Xbox, on Xbox formats uh, for gory, cuddly carnage and tin hearts right now that you can play and have a nice little slice in time with ahead of launch, which are coming next year. Um, <clears throat> so get a look at the game, have a feel and uh, enjoy the, um, you know, it's like being at E3, but at home. Yeah. We talked about yeah. this last week and, um, and the week you know, before. We, we, but, yeah. but, you know, one thing that's good about the demos is it doesn't cost you much time because it's not like when you download, I don't know, the new Call of Duty. It's 120 gig. We've spoke about this, mate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like... You, just, you download it like that, boom. You're in there for free. So just just do it, innit? Just have a go. Tin Hearts is, uh, yeah. is, is particularly exciting for me because actually... Uh, I got to play Gory Cuddly Conch quite a few times, but whenever I went to uh, uh, see Wired at a consumer show, there was always somebody playing Tin Hearts. So I was yeah. like, I've never had the chance to sit down and play it properly. I played, I played the, a previous demo, but so uh, I've got this downloaded on my Xbox. So uh, speak, speaking of Tin Hearts and um, you know seeing yeah. it at shows and stuff, and someone is always playing it um, at PAX. Yeah. The, the last the last PAX that we were at. Um, you'll, you'll remember actually because obviously we were both there yeah. um, there was a child and his dad right and they were there for the full set of days and they came back multiple times every day uh, so much so that cost us uh, the guy who's making uh, from Rogue Son who's, uh, who's, who's yeah. you know, this, this is his child yeah. ended up having like a really nice caring conversation because it was like okay what <laughs> Why you kept coming back like we know our game is good but you know yeah, what, what, what's so special on it yeah yeah and it, it, obviously there was just some some magic in it that resonated with this kid i mean he was i think it must have been like nine ten uh and he was just just hooked every single day that's what was, come I, back I was just and, about my daughter who's 11 smashing wednesday twice i i love that kids are like that you know you've just watched wednesday on netflix and you go you know what so nice i'll watch it twice you just go, it, 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 give it an instant, an instant wheel up, and you're right back on it. Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? Do you know what I need in my life after Wednesday? More Wednesday. I like that this kid's been in this. You need it, Thursday. Con- you need <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what's right after Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I love that. That a whole, a whole convention hall full of games, <laughs> played in hearts and gone. Do you know what? Fancy going back again tomorrow and playing that again. That is yeah. what it's all about, isn't it? So yeah. that's, have, that's you, have you, have uh, you, have you set your, have you set your kids on onto Willow yet? Did you ever watch Willow? The original the Willow. The yeah, original Willow. I, I, I watched that, but I haven't put my kids onto that. No, well, no. no, no. Here's the thing. Um, there's, there's a new series released on Disney Plus. Oh, is it out now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Which brings back, yeah. it brings back an incredible amount <laughs> of the cast. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I watched the first episode, and the conversation I had was. Who the f- who the fudge is this show even for? Because it's it's made it's made in a way that kind of respects what Willow was in terms of how ha- how it looks, and it, it's kind of like a it, it initially felt like oh they they're trying to do like a really CBBC uh, the Queen's Nose. version of Game of Thrones, oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not even the Queen's Nose, um, and. I was like, who is this even for? And it, it's like, it's for a youth audience, but then someone will just drop yeah. an S-bomb here and there. And it's like, why? Well, you but wanna, anyway. You want to know something? This is this yeah, is, this is not a really tenuous segue. I genuinely mean this. I did not care about it enough until I saw the trailer on, like there was like a feature out on Disney Plus. Yeah. Which is why you should always put a demo out of your game. Yeah, and Let- put Warwick Davis and everything. <laughs> Yeah, apparently so. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a good, uh, that's a good way to swing it back. Yeah, it was, <laughs> right? Yeah. That was, that was genuinely... I watched that feature, I watched that feature, and it's Warwick Davis talking to all talking the cast to members. The new cast but, it's like, also, but it's also done as like a comedic skit as well. Yeah, and you exactly. find a lot of that comedy throughout the show as well. Yeah. Um, but I am happy to say that, you know, once episode two was after, I was like, okay, this is this is, this is is good. It's getting better. This is, this, this, no, this is yeah. good. Um, 
<laughs> this is good. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is a good point about you know why demos are important. Get a taste, get a feel. It's your featurette. It's your pre-launch featurette. Yes, Speaking of featurettes, you know there are many games that are coming up next year, and one thing that I've been working on <clears throat> this week um, are some of the behind the scenes, not scripts, but um, I guess blocking out what the behind the scenes yeah. uh, things are going uh, are to look like for the next set of games for next year. Oh, That's yeah. really exciting. Yeah, yeah. so you know, we've done them for Arcade Paradise, for Martha is Dead, and so on and so on. They're really good if you want to get a, a little look into um, what it's like to make a game. Um, and, you know, some questions are asked that aren't, you know, easy easy balls to 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 serve and bat away it's what are the challenges what are challenges are people facing what yeah. specific things actually do cause complications and then how do you deal with them because you know for any one decision there are 10,000 <laughs> 10,000 potential answers yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and, and that's for something as simple as a logo do you know what i mean <laughs> It's like across across the spectrum. Especially when there's a lot of people <clears throat> whose opinions do matter and there's a lot of creative people in the art of video games. And so even something like that, like what colour should yeah. the logo be, what font or whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. So yeah, you've been working on that for, for the games on the way. Yeah, the slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got two more, two more to, to tick off the list ahead of Christmas. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah. But, but it's good because it's... Um, it's kind of cathartic in a way because you get to know these developers over time, you know, spending time with them at PAX, you spend a lot of time looking at the games, the plans, the considerations and so on. Mm. Um, so to take, you know, you, you can take a grain of sand of something that was dropped in a conversation. And you're like, Oh, that's interesting. There is no way that information would ever come out if that conversation didn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like picking up on all those things. It's, it's exciting it's fun yeah lovely fun. little behind the scenes yeah yeah that's going down um and that's that's gonna be uh it's gonna be some good fun yeah right nice well yeah. so we've got the propaganda cannon this week i mean it's wrapping up for christmas now i suppose so it is wrapping up for christmas and in that spirit we have unwrapped some new information via a nice festive trailer that was just released for uh the last worker um which I'm trying to there's wrap in there's boxes parcels there's a joke somewhere and i can't make it Hmm. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's, it's, it's just somewhere. It's been somewhere delivered. In no, I don't know. Unless it's been delivered by every. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't listen. Anyway, um, so yeah, no, uh, you know, there's not a there's not a definitive date, but we have announced that it's coming in early 2023 uh, to PC, Xbox Series consoles, PS5, Switch, Switch. Um, you know which. Jorg, um, you know, who's the creator director on the game, again, whose baby it is, um, he, he he thinks the Switch version is is magic. You know, he, wow. he's, especially on the OLED as well. It, it looks great because the, the art style is Mick McMahon, right? From, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, that really pops on an OLED, on an OLED screen. The fact that you can play it portably and it just looks so good is brilliant. But uh, PSVR 2 as well. Yeah, perfect, that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's, I love that. You got Switch and PS VR too, like living comfortably yeah. together. Yeah, I'm, and it, even then, it? even then, there are some interesting things that are going to be spoken out about down the line that some people probably haven't even considered about how certain things function. And I'm being very, <laughs> very cryptic, um, but mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the surprise. But there's going to be some interesting details coming out about uh, the last, the last worker. Um, yeah, early 2023 it is then, yeah. That's news. Early 2023. Oh. But go watch the trailer as well because it's really funny. It's really cool. Uh, and it's it's festive. It's festive. You know, is, like yeah, me. I, I, yeah, I watched it like four four yeah. hours ago. What like me, Kurt, Kurt from the <clears throat> game has put on a nice Christmas jumper as well. Maybe yes. I'll maybe next week. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll yeah. bring something to the table that isn't. Yeah, do it. You know, I, I like Krampus compared to you, <laughs> to be honest. All right, okay. <laughs> 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 This is an interesting bit of propaganda I can see that you've written here because uh, it's a bit of an interactive one, isn't it, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious about what one you're talking about. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if we could yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't moved to propaganda yet, have we? No, we, we're in propaganda. Yeah, but we, haven't moved this, we haven't moved to this brand new section, which is uh, kind of what it's regarding, and it's regarding questions, right? That's the yeah. important propaganda to get out of the canon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah, it is interactive. 
I've had a week. <laughs> I've had a week. <laughs> yeah. This, you know, there's a book going around. Um, that, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'm you unwell. Know. Ge- no, sorry. Genuinely, I am unwell. I'm like, I'm like, I'm fire. I'm fire inside. I'm fire and sawdust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a bit of Balrog. <laughs> I, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got I'm, in. I'm, 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 I'm a vampire mm-hmm. mid-death transition. Do you know that, what I mean? That's really good. That yeah. yeah. L- listen, yeah, for the folks at home, Aaron is braving it a lot. Like he he looks as good as he sounds if you're only listening to this. And I moved house, so we're really keeping it together. But that's why uh, I turned up in a Christmas jumper to balance it out. Exactly. But we can't do it alone, which is why over the last few weeks we've been going, listen, dear viewers. Well, come by the- crook. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. Make it out. yeah, ask us some we're, we're, we're trying to get some people to ask some questions because it, it helps shape the show really and it gives a chance to hear where we're at. We've given you our little baseball nerd statistic about Bulgaria and China, yeah. So if you're a Bulgarian listening in and you'd like to ask a question, or maybe you're from China, you can tweet us. Um like I say every week, it's Wired P for Productions podcast, but quite newly there's the Wired Unplugged thing. But you can also email us at unplugged at wiredproductions.com and if you tag hashtag wired unplugged, what happens, Aaron? Something potentially exciting for the dear viewer. Yeah, it's a season of giving. It's a season of giving, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So if uh, one of your questions are picked out and answered on the show, if you use hashtag wired unplugged on social when you submit your questions, you will win a game of your choice from the wired catalog. Any game of your choice. Yeah. And that catalog is quite could be old, could be new. Yeah. Something borrowed something yeah. blue. Yeah, have a little look. You know, a lot of people are into that Victor Van. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. See for yourself. Geralt of Rivia hunting demons. Exactly. Yes. And if you want Geralt of Rivia sort of on the phone, kind of, you know, saying, hey, how's our our little uh, wash going yeah, on, listen, kiddo? I, and you're like, listen, we, listen, Dad, I've, yeah. I've got an arcade to run. Then you can get Arcade yeah. Paradise. There was, a, there was a really good uh, <laughs> a really good video that me, uh, Neil and the folks worked on a long time ago when Victor Fra- <laughs> Victor Fran was coming out. Um and obviously uh so Victor Vran uh, yeah. is is voiced by uh Doug Cockle. Yeah. Uh Geralt of Rivia. He Friends is the, uh, the dad. He is the dad from RK Paradise as yeah. well. Yeah. Many of us, many of the voices and so on. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, when when we <laughs> when we talk about the game promotional <laughs> materials, you know, we can't say, you know, this is this is Geralt of Rivia as Victor Rand. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> because, yeah, you can't. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. which doesn't belong to us. Um, <clears throat> other people can say that's totally fine. Uh, but I, I remember we we uh, we ma- we made a video where it was uh, Doug Cockle answering. Um, it was answering getting uh, a, a a mobile assistant to answer questions, <laughs> right in the voice of Victor Fran. Um, which has similarities to Geralt, we could say. Mm-hmm. And he was asking uh, Siri on an Apple device <laughs> question. So I was like, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, it's just a bit of fun. Got really. on a technicality. Uh, Doug, yeah. Co- Doug Cockle joined us for one of the very first episodes, and he was also he unwell. He had, inter- yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think he had COVID or whatever. Do you, yeah, do you, yeah. Yeah, do you the episode? So yeah. shout out. Yeah, you're talking about the Victor Van Days. If you're interested in, in hearing what Doug Cockle's got to say about that, uh, his performance uh, as Geralt of Rivia and uh, some Arcade Paradise stuff. He kind of kept it a bit low-key because the game hadn't really, uh, you know, his, his announcement in it hadn't really been announced. But but it is there. I think it's why why a Unplugged episode. It might be one, actually. It might be the, the, the first numbered one. But in, in case you're quite new here. It was here, early, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, then you can go back and have a look. And it was recorded about this time last year, believe it or not. So, yeah. uh, so there we go. And, I, yeah, I, and uh, you, you'll find, it, I, I love that interview as well. Um, <clears throat> but in that episode as well, it's a little addendum after the interview where um, you will learn why you should not drink milk if you are about to go and do uh, several hours of voice recording. Yeah, yeah, th- th- there is, yeah, there is a good yeah. little pro tip. Been quite a yeah. lot of voice acting pro tips on this podcast so far. So yeah, yeah. hey, there we go. Yeah. Plus, I, I like to bring that up every now and then for our new audience. Don't drink milk. Well, well, I drink oat milk, to be honest, so uh, I'm all right. Well, uh, listen, listen, sorry, yeah. this is getting out of hand. I know this is, tra- this is trailing off. What the hell is this? What, what's it called? Piz? No, pilk. <laughs> it probably tastes like piss, whatever it is. Yeah. It? <laughs> you know about this pilk. one? It's <laughs> pilk. Yeah. 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 Where, where people are mixing uh, Pepsi and milk together which is which is uh you know there's a coke it drink other alternatives are available but it, i'm like yeah, yeah. people are mixing cola and and milk 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's Pepsi, 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 uh, and it's it's milk. It's probably it's some tilt up fingers. I'm just looking now. Sorry, it's milk. It is milk. I can't believe it. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's it's actually so so. Well, to not go completely off topic, but to try and bring this back into some contemporary pop culture relevance. <clears throat> On Netflix, other streaming services are available. There was a documentary about about pepsi's marketing viral marketing and in fact we we've kind of just done it in this podcast in this podcast we said hey if you ask us a question we'll give you something you know just by being a viewer well pepsi were one of the first people to ever do that that create a loyalty scheme and everything like that the documentary called pepsi where's my jet and in the advert it was all the things that you could get with your pepsi points and at the end it was if you got a million points you could get a fighter jet and it's the story of a guy who accrued all of these points to try and get a jet and this and that. Anyway, Pepsi have always been really good marketing wise, and this is this pilk thing is part of Pepsi's new marketing campaign, which is on TikTok, which has issued a challenge to the youths of today. So there we go. I, I have, I have, uh, I have an interesting Pepsi fact. Yeah, yeah. Did you know, did you know that at one point Pepsi had the fourth or fifth largest naval. Presence, naval presence in the world. No, but that is a really, really good fact. Do you like, want to know why? Go on. <clears throat> I, I think it was Pepsi. I don't think it was Coke. I think it was Pepsi, and it was um, essentially a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago, when Pepsi were you, you've been to the cinema, right? And it's like, oh yeah, I love a, I love a Coke and a popcorn. Like, is Pepsi okay? You know, and and, and you know, there's yeah. a. There's I used to a work large... in a cinema and do that. The, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a there's a, a big battle right for exclusivity of Pepsi versus <clears throat> Coke and so on, yeah. uh, and Pepsi um, <laughs> Pepsi were um, arranging a deal so that they could be the only Coke drink um, distributed in Russia, right? Yeah. And Russia were like, listen, we can't pay you with cash. You know, we, we don't want to do that. But do you want some naval wow. units? Do you, do you want yeah. some ships? Yeah, I know the fighter jet that they owed someone. Yeah, so... yeah, exactly, exactly. I wonder <laughs> if that was part of that. But um, yeah, and it, it essentially, then they, they took it. They had a, what you know, the fifth largest naval presence <laughs> in the world at one point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then essentially they used. Uh, I, I think they were scrapped or sold on. Sold on. Uh, yeah. to, Who's, who's in the who's in the market for a massive naval ship? Do you well, know yeah, think? exactly. <clears throat> did that way. I've yeah. my, to, to sort of cap this uh, Pepsi factoid uh, war off. Um, uh, Are we uh, sponsored I, by them yet? Yeah, well, yeah, the yeah, wide PP for Pepsi. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, when I worked in in a, in a bar and you have to say is Pepsi okay? Uh, yeah. Someone said to me once, "No, it's not." I, and I thought, "Haha!" But they said, "No, it's not," because I'm allergic to licorice, and Pepsi has licorice in, and Coke doesn't. So, wow. so, so I don't know if you have to ask for like a health reason or whatever, or probably a marketing thing, but just there you go. So, I mean, look, that, that, this is, this has been propaganda for Pepsi, but this has still been the propaganda section. on Turn into QI, aren't we? <laughs> these, these are, these are good. These are really good facts. Yeah. So yeah, uh, th honestly, that Pepsi fact is good. I, I don't know what to tell you. I haven't had Pepsi in a long time. Right. Okay. Well, listen. There's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of news Pilk. out there. Yeah, Pilk. That's, Pilk one, that's, one, that's, that's one of my highlights, honestly. Uh, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run the propaganda section uh, to the ground now with my military presence, and I'm gonna bring out the the wider news and let's see what's going on. News waits from Google. This is the section of the podcast where Aaron scours the internet. Probably quite desperately this week because it's quite early in the week and all the news is, uh, you know, uh, kind of hinging around the game awards to find what has been going on. And I must say, you've done a stellar job because I've looked at these news articles and gone, oh yeah, all of them. I'm like, oh yeah, there's some. You've got some crackers here, Christmas crackers. So what's going on yeah. in the wider world, Darren? I'm going to start off with this, and this is a conversation that we have had many times, at least surrounding the topic of this. So you know, previously it was mentioned that. Um, Xbox uh, are set to acquire Activision Blizzard for an obscene amount of money, right? Um, and then this has gone to, uh, this has ended up with Sony trying to block the acquisition in yeah. terms of, um, you know, not wanting to create uh, unfair market circumstances. Right. It's been developments. <laughs> it's been developments. So at one point, uh, you know, Phil Spencer said, you know, we're, we're more than happy to make uh, an arrangement with Sony and we can right. commit that the game's going to be on 
PlayStation consoles uh, for the next 10 years, yada, yada, yada. Mm. Uh, something happened this week where Phil Spencer came out and said, ah, uh, um, it was Phil Spencer or someone at Microsoft, come, so please forgive me, but uh, it was it was quoted as saying, um, you know, Sony seemed more interested in talking to the regulators as opposed to talking directly with them to arrange Ooh. something that's yeah. good for them. But in in the most shocking anime plot twist move, mm -hmm. this is what <laughs> last night. Last night when this was recorded, uh, Phil Spencer went on Twitter and said, "Hey, uh, Microsoft uh, and Xbox have arranged a deal." Uh, with Nintendo uh, to bring Call of Duty to consoles over the next 10 years if the Activision Blizzard deal goes through. That is so that smart is really in funny. this battle because, yeah. one, you get another console <laughs> fan base on your side saying, oh, okay, we're not currently getting Call of Duty, so it'd be cool to have some yeah. Call of Duty yeah, if we don't play it elsewhere. Um, but also, what you also do is put a hole in Sony's argument to say it's anti-competitive when it's like, it's coming to all of it, these places over here. Do you want, do you want to be It's made this PlayStation look so silly, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it, that is honestly a, a genius stroke, an actual genius stroke. Like, uh, uh, honestly, I read this and I was like, what? Yeah, how yeah. clever is that? That is, yeah. that's like a Game of Thrones twist. <laughs> Man, I, I, there's, there's part of me where I'm like, wow, that, that is such a, that is such a clever way to move these pieces around the board if yeah, that conversation is not going anywhere um but also <laughs> i was just kind of feeling i was feeling the, for the folks that work on call of duty that work up and source and was like the hell uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got to make this work on switch and sorry i love the switch you know me like yeah, i am absolutely nintendo yeah. massive yeah. um and, but that is going to be a bit of a squeeze switch. yeah yeah and it's like what what can they do with it and you know if quality is the, you know, some people have already gone out there and said, oh, well, obviously this means that um, the Xbox's cloud streaming technology might be made available for Switch users and so on. But then that this, leads to a much larger yeah. question of, you know, what does that, does that mean what people have said for a long time or desired where it's like, oh, could Game Pass come to Switch? And, you know, um, yeah. I, who 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 knows what's going on there? There's so I guess, many. I guess the most outs. exciting thing, you know, <clears throat> to, to focus on is that <laughs> it's just a reminder, isn't it, when they say um, Nintendo consoles over the next ten years, that, that there probably is going to be another Nintendo console in that ten years. You know, yeah. Switch well, is five I mean, years old. Let, let's let, let's be honest. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah exactly but it almost i mean they've like... already said they're working on a new console they're already researching development yeah and but of, you, you'd, of like to, you'd like to think that well this is just a bit of a hopium for me i think i think i think i'm just like hopium yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I think i mm. think that i'm just like thinking all right well there's no way they're going to get warzone on that thing and then it's like well unless there was a new switch just around the corner uh, which uh they can they put it but then again you know um Fair enough, they've got Overwatch on there, but that's a bit old as well. Fortnite. But, but 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'll tell you what, Apex Legends even. Apex Legends yeah. is, is is a is a you know graphically very nice. Uh, EA, right? E e EA uh yep. Battle Royale. And they got that working everything. And I think they might have Call of Duty working on mobile as well, actually. So if they can do cool. it on mobile. Yeah, yeah, does that game called Call of Duty Mobile? Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So so um yeah, what a smart thing. And yeah, Nintendo fans, uh, Nintendo Switch owners, which is, you know, the majority of yeah. people who would call themselves gamers, I suppose, will uh, will be probably excited to play. I, I, I just had to salute the strategic maneuver. Yeah, 300 and the balls IQ behind that. doing that. that Do you know genius. what I mean? That's, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, read it, I read it this morning when I woke up and I, I, I read it five times to make sure I was reading it correctly. Yeah. And I was like, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Like, genius yeah, you, move. So yeah, you so, got to respect it. You, you, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you've got to. Come on, right? Th th that's brilliant. So okay, that's that's good. We we have uh, quite a lot of developments in that in this story, and quite a lot of them seem, you know, incremental and and you know minor changes maybe. But this one, whew, new challenge around this the game. Nintendo yeah, I, getting I, in there. Uh, as as part of this, and it's it's not being spoken about as much because it's it's not the it's not the what it's not the mic drop moment, but um. You know, as as part of this as well, there's also a recommitment to uh, Call of Duty coming to Steam yeah. as well. Yeah. So Ex yeah. Ex exactly. So it's it's all as fair and love and war in it. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Nice one. Nice one. Microsoft Xbox. Good. Good game. That. GG. Yeah. All right. What's next? 
this this is this one's for you. This one's for you because last week, mm-hmm. I think I think we we, I think we did some predictions. Actually. Yeah, we did some predictions, and one of your predictions was about Elden Ring. It was yeah. It's about Elden Ring, and then you know, as time of recording yesterday, it was announced that there is a, a PvP Coliseum. Uh, update coming to Elden Ring. Yeah, it's actually which is out. word for word exactly what you said, exactly what, what you I... alluded to, what you thought was the same. Because as you said as well, it was it was kind of standard for you know what happened in Dark Souls and so on. So it's not out of the norm. Yeah, it's but, um... it's it's not it's not. I, I'm hoping there'll be more Elden Ring announcement tomorrow. Um, in the sense of a big story based bit of DLC that I can still hope, but yeah. I doubt I, that. Do you know what? <laughs> I don't know. I I I I don't know because. I think that Elden Ring is so large that even that announcement, sorry, I say even that announcement, it doesn't appeal to me, but it might to no, others, no, and that's no, fine. Yeah. Um, but even that announcement is still Elden Ring at the Game Awards, right? Now, yeah, I, I, there could be a case that they've got that out of the way, and then, you know, That's what tomorrow. I'm thinking, yeah, because they've, they've been a bit low-key about it. So actually, yeah, yeah. Like at the time of recording, yesterday they announced it, and that went into effect at midnight today. So it's it's already... So they were just like, oh, tomorrow we're adding loads of stuff. See ya. Switch. Yeah. And that was Bye. it. Boom. And then that yeah. was it. New, there's, there's, you know, it's all like minor things, new hairstyles and that or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. They, 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 Where are you on it? Uh, it's great. Obviously, like the PvP scene is what keeps the Souls games alive after people have completed the story. And hmm. it's like the reason loads of people dip in. So the idea that you can kind of... The thing about Dark Souls, in case people don't really understand, because you might have heard about the Souls games and PvP before, but basically the game has this system where you can kind of invade other players' instances and kind mm. of cause havoc. And to kind of counterbalance that, you can summon the aid of friendly travelers who will come into your world to protect you from these, you know, bad people, the red, like, you yeah. know, spirits. But the idea of there being some sort of gentlemanly jewel uh in a coliseum uh is 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 kind of cool but they also added like essentially like a team deathmatch mode as well so yes yeah. that's what I, that was gonna ask I, I don't know if i had misrepresented what i saw but there was um you know two tarnished mm-hmm. yeah fighting against two bosses uh no i well, two I, monsters i've i've no well uh, so the, the the three game modes there's three coliseums in elden ring and each one has its own different set of rules so the first one is just traditional 1v1 me bro jewels yeah the second one is uh i think 3v3 but um it might be 4v4 but uh it there's like there's a timer you can respawn in it so you can it's just your team and their team whoever can get the most kills in five minutes and then the final Coliseum is both that I've just mentioned, but you can summon the uh, the ashes. You can summon spirits. Uh, so you can summon, okay. you know, if you've got the wolves or, you know, yeah. there's, a mi- 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 there's a mimic tier that can yeah. summon yourself. So you can summon two of you. Um, so if, if all of you use that, that'd be like essentially like 16 of you on the field. Side. It's, it's, it was, a, it was a, a really cool thing. And like I say, PvP is... Uh, it's a whole different beast in Elden Ring and like uh, all, all the Souls games where you can create a really good build, which is great against bosses and monsters. But then, you know, you want to have like, I really love the PvP in the Souls games because it's really like boxing. It's really all about timing and distance. And if you're in there with like a heavyweight, you've got to like whittle them down. But all, all they need to do is be perfect for like two seconds and you're dead. You know the way that the Souls games are. Yeah, yeah. It's it's You can't ever be greedy and because and, as soon as you leave yourself open. So it's, there's a lo- lot of timing in it. I love it because it's so psychological. When you're 1v1 in another player, you're just thinking, have they got how much how much healing have they got left? Oh, and, yeah. and, and you're trying to like act, you know, so it's, it's I, great. I, I had that experience like... Um, <laughs> Way, way back when, when we first kicked this off, I think it was one week where I completed Dark Souls for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing yeah. on Switch because I love the Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I completed it for the first time, including the DLC, and I, I thought it was amazing. And I yeah. had the experience of someone invading my world. And the it makes your heart go because you're like, yeah. you, you're trying to, you're like, I feel like I'm, I'm quite powerful, but their build is completely. Yeah. In contrast to yeah. mine, I'm like, I don't know how to gauge it because I haven't learned enough of the game to know what You're skills. Con- you constantly assume everyone is way, way, way more powerful than you and, and like uh, way more with it than you, I think. And and, and it, it can create like uh, this funny little psychological trick. Because, yeah, I, you hear about these Dark Souls players that are like, um, you know, super, you know, everyone's dead invested in it. 
bats, aren't they? So yeah. you, you're right. It'll make you think, oh, oh gosh, they must be playing like on the meta, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Just a humble sword yeah. guy. <laughs> you know? so, so much so, I, ha- I had that experience, and then I discovered the Colosseum in Dark Souls. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I won't go there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, no, it's not for me. I'm just gonna trundle along. Yeah, do you know uh... what? Do you know what? I never like. I, I, I've 100 all of the Souls games. I loved them to death. L- literally, you know, uh, oof, this week. That's compelling. Uh, it, it just keeps drawing you in. And you're like, yeah, really I is. Love it. Really is. Last few days, I was back on Bloodborne and whatnot. But do you know what? I never really had the itch to go. Do you know what? I'm gonna go and invade someone's world and ruin their day. Or I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do the people. It's just not, it's not for me, really. I like to defend yeah. others. I like to put my little my, my little spirit down to help with bosses and and that, but I'm just not really yeah. yeah. So it's cool to be able to do this, I guess. I, I'll, I'll have a spin of it tonight, I think. But yeah, yeah. nice one, good news. That oh, going on, this one's not so good, is it? Because it's just Overwatch season two. But this one, Ooh. yeah, well, we've spoke about this before, but uh, <laughs> but also not. So yep, <laughs> Yuji Naka. Uh, one of the fathers of Sonic, creator of the smash hit Battle of Wonderworld, um, has, uh, <laughs> has been rearrested. Um, great, oh, great word, by the way. Uh, yeah, rearrested over um, <laughs> alleged, alleged, because it's not proven it at is, the moment. It's true. Um, over insider trading again, this time relating to Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier. Mm. Um, so. You know, we it came up uh, a couple of episodes ago where you know Yuji Naka and other members, ex members of um, Square Enix, had been uh, unfortunately arrested, and again it was over insider trading uh, relating to um, buying shares in a company that they knew and had gained information that was going to be making a Dragon Quest mobile game. Yeah, alleged again. Uh, in that instance, allegedly, um, Yuji Naka's contribution in that was um, twenty thousand dollars. I think it was related to. I think. I yeah. think. I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm. Uh, this time, this time that sum has risen to uh, eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars plus. Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> jinx. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you know, let's, which, allegedly, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's a very interesting uh set of affairs isn't it um it i don't is. think the last yeah. uh the last allegation has been resolved um but you know it seems either one someone is allegedly out to get this guy for yeah. some reason yeah um yeah. Yeah. or he decided hey i like a life of crime of alleged crime uh, <laughs> i don't know yuji yeah. naka just did a, t- a heel turn and was like you know what Nah, I, I really I'm gonna make a, I'm turn. gonna make a terrible game, yeah. an allegedly terrible game, a subjectively terrible game, um, <laughs> and cash in back. elsewhere. Yeah, I don't know. I love, I love, I would really like this podcast episode to be called "A Life of Alleged Crime." <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny to me. But you know what? Yeah, it's it's, it's difficult, and I'm I'm not sure because you know, for, for those that don't know what Inside the Trade is, I'm gonna try my best to explain it. Gosh. Um it, es- essentially, you know how stocks and shares work, right? You buy something at one price and then it can go up or down in value, like the turnips in Animal Crossing. Um but mm. like imagine if you were somebody quite powerful high up in a company and so that means that you knew kind of what everyone else was up to. So let's let's just use mobile phones for example, yeah. Let's say it was a quiet world in Apple and you knew secretly before anyone else that there was going to be a new iphone dropping tomorrow it could come out tomorrow only you knew right somehow because someone's told you so you just buy all of the stocks and shares now because you know what's about to happen and then as soon as the announcement is boom there's a new iphone everyone's wants in so then you can sell them for more money that's how it works so imagine then you get this information from somebody how hard is it to prove that so what i'm trying to say is Yuji Naka being accused twice. Oh, he must be doing inside trading because how did he know to do that? Da, 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 da. I mean, it's a very difficult thing to prove or disprove, which is why it's it can happen multiple times where people are alleged to be doing these things, why people can be accused easily and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but I mean, 
alleged or not, what I'll say is it's quite fishy, isn't it? That there have been two mobile games back to back that they happen to know about and then done that. Um, and yeah, it's it's kind of a weird... Um... Now, what happens if that conversation is the other way around? For yes. example, For example, Yuji Naka has been in the games industry for a long time, has made a lot of friends. You know, apparently some alleged enemies. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, for example, if you know people yeah. at these companies and, you know, it's similar to someone trying to pitch to invest in a game, right? If someone came to them and say, hey, we're friends from the past. Um, tr- trust me, we've got something big coming up. You should probably buy some shares. Help keep us afloat, blah, blah, blah. And we promise mm-hmm. that you'll get some investment. Uh, I wonder what, you know, I think it goes back to what you said. How do they prove the point of knowledge versus investment? And if, yeah. you know, what what is the source of truth in all this? Because so how many but... of these conversations are happening in the pub somewhere? So, alleged so, conversations. Alleged yeah. conversations. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, interesting news and a bit of a criminal touch there. So, yeah, very good. Good, good. I can't how you fished out these stories so far this week with just a few days. And you're yeah. ill. Amazing work. All right. What else have we got going on at pre-game awards? This is this is actually one that excites me a lot. Um, so I really loved Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah you yeah. know, that was that was a really cool, um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it was their first game out of the gate, so you could forgive some bits here and there. But it was um, a mature take on the world of Star Wars, um, adds to the lore, um, yeah. uh, and kind of took... A, a soul's light elements in yep. terms of how you, how you fight and encounter things and yep. so on. Um, I, I thought the game was great, but the sequels announced way back when um, that, hey, we are making a sequel. It's called Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, and it has been announced that it's going to be one of the games that's featured at the Game Awards. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yep. you know, by the time you listen to this, you would have seen it. Um, so bear with us that we haven't seen this. Um, but... Um, there was there is some news in this and again you will know the answer to this if it's true or not at the game awards i guess Mm. um there was a a leak via steam which suggests that the game should be ready to launch in march which isn't which isn't long away we're talking three months right no yeah yeah yeah. we're talking three months not a lot next to nothing is known about the game right um but again i assume the game awards they have said we're going to show off uh i just dropped a pen uh this is we are going to an uh, exciting t- moment like yeah. yeah it's so exciting we're going to show new gameplay trailer hopefully they'll announce a release date we don't know um the one thing that is cool about this um is that they released a, a piece of key art which shows cal who's the main character mm. who's um a little bit older hopefully a little bit wiser yeah um <laughs> and he's got his lightsaber it's blue. Mine was mine was purple in the game, but whatever. <laughs> um, and um, one cool detail is on his hip, which blink and you'll miss it, is a blaster. Hmm. There's a blaster, which is a new element that they could be thrown into the mix in terms yeah. of gunplay. Uh, it's so uncivilized, though. But um, yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's something very interesting in the art. Uh, as soon as I saw the blaster, and you see uh, the the bandolier slash belt it's attached to and the way it is the the, the image reminds me of call of juarez you know it feels like it's got some sort of red dead western yeah. gunslinger thing to this yeah right um yeah, yeah. and uh I, you know good potential there yeah is let, let's be honest all the jedis are outlaws and outcasts and they're trying not to use their force powers if you watch Obi-Wan on disney plus other yeah. streaming services are available yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes, what yeah, it adds. Be, I really enjoyed the the first game. Yeah, and it's it's made by uh, Respawn, isn't it? Who Respawn? Who who are, who are absolute legends at the game of shooting? You know, Titanfall yeah. two. They did. I mean, say no Amazing more. Really. Game. But, Under underrated, <clears throat> underrated, underappreciated. Yeah, well, definitely one of the games of the generation last time. And yeah, uh, yeah you know, much like Titanfall two, <clears throat> I picked up this uh, latest Star Wars offering. Uh, uh, Fallen Order, right? I mean, not the not the new one. It's not out. Did I Fallen uh, Order? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I picked that up for a ridiculous price, same as Titanfall. I think I got it for about four pound. It was on sale somewhere. What? Might have been on like, might it honestly might have been my local like Asda or Tesco or whatever. It was just kind like of bargain bin thing. And yeah. so I went in there. I kind of missed all of the hype because it's like hype for everything Star Wars. So it kind of like yeah. I become a bit like 
you know, I, I'm like, okay, well, whatever. But of course they're going to be excited because they're Star Wars fans. So I went in there with no expectations and I spent four quid and I had a blast. Not yeah. a blaster, but maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And, 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 and uh, yeah, and it's the same with Titanfall. Titanfall is the same thing. So, so yeah, respawn, they know how to shoot. So there is a blaster. You know that the gunplay will be w- wicked. Like, um, yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll we'll find out that release date. We'll we'll see. Uh, you you'll you'll know before us, dear listener. You'll know before us. But we'll be back next week to talk all about that. Um, all right, exciting, exciting, very exciting. So one more bit. Mm-hmm. One more bit of news. Go on. And this is this in, this involves some people that you are familiar with. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it people that we have met individually mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. past who are just really really good people yeah um so uh for those who have ever played banjo kazooie star fox adventures donkey kong uh mm-hmm. sparks of hope marion rabbits yeah yeah good shot. um ukulele mm-hmm. you would have heard the music of these guys so uh grant kirkhope uh david wise and kev bayliss um they have released a, a gaming themed christmas single <laughs> Yeah. which is available on on spotify and so on check it out that's it, it's 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 great these are these are musical legends doing this <laughs> yeah yeah kev bayless man like what Ke- Ke- he's kev bayless, you know? so kev kev bayless um you know he's he's a rare he's a rare alumni mm. um and he, he he was the voice of prince tricky as that's, well as the that's <laughs> good. Star Fox Adventures. I, I'm laughing. I'm, yeah, I was going to say Star Fox Adventures has got a shout from us the last two in a row, and now this, is, yeah. this makes it a hat trick. But um, uh, he did the soundtrack to that, didn't he? He did the Star yeah. Fox Adventures soundtrack. Uh, David Wise is like, uh, I think I've told people this before, but he's the guy that made me love uh, music. The first time I ever heard a song ever in my life where I actually remember thinking I want to hear that again was embarrassingly and sadly, like, Spice Girls wannabe. Depending on how you view it, I'm not ashamed. But the first music that I really loved that wasn't video game related. I, I, I thought you was going to say David Wise worked with the Spice Girls then. No. <laughs> that's like, what? That's the first That's the first thing I ever did. Yeah. And, uh, but the first thing I ever loved, loved, loved was the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack. And it made me want to yes. be a musician. Or, this is a bit of a shameless plug, but, but I just want to say today, the day of recording, I hit a life goal because... When I was a young boy and playing these video game things, I wanted to make music and that and get on like, the BBC and that. And today, yeah. a, a, a do- documentary that I composed a soundtrack to came out on the BBC. So now I play no it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all because of my love for music and David Wise. And I, I got in touch with David Wise and, mm. uh, when I was younger, way younger, and sent him like a, like a fan mail, like what people used to do. And he replied to me and everything. And mm. so him and Grant Kirkup, their music is, is the most beautiful thing to me. And so I didn't know about this. I knew that they were working on some stuff. I didn't know about it till, till you wrote the notes here. And I went and listened to it just before this podcast. I listened to it. So you can find it on Spotify. It's, it's out already at the time of recording. And like you mentioned, the proceeds are going to special effect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, friend, fr- good. Fr- friend, friends of the, of the show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it's a bit of a, it's got a bit of a weird intro, hasn't it? It's like some sort of skit about like a, a kid saying, you know, I want a game for Christmas. And it's like someone's pretend to be their nan saying, yeah. what's that? But, you know, you, you have to remember that, you know, these are the folks that did the DK rap. So these uh, are, yeah, they are the people behind yeah. the DK rap. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that, yeah well, uh, uh, the holy trinity there of, uh, of video game composers in the rare days, putting something out for fun. I like that. Yeah. They did it for fun and for charity and stuff. So yeah, so shout yeah. out to them. Um, now I think you've done incredible this week with the news section. So big, well done. Because, geez, come on, that's good. Um, now listen, I'm really sorry to let you down, but I still—it's only been a week and I've been moving house. Don't have a question time sort of jingle. I don't have a jingle. I've got a news jingle. Um, so I'm just going to do this. And, right, let's do this. Hang on a minute. This is the section of the show where viewers can ask questions to Jake and Aaron. If you'd like to send a question, you can tweet Wired Unplugged or Wired P for Pepsi. Or you can email unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Question time, question time, question time, question time. That's the best I could do. Sorry. I can just... you whack that on a button? Can you whack that on a button? I, can you... I... We really love to whack that on a button. We should just keep that for a minute, right? <laughs> there we go. So, so uh, as, I, as I just said... This is the part of the show where we take it to you, the dear viewer slash listener, um, the Bulgarian or not, to ask questions and we shall answer them. Uh, and again, just to be very clear, if you'd like to help shape the podcast in the future and send us a question, 
I think the best way to do it is tweet us at Wired Unplugged because if you do that, you can use a little hashtag Wired Unplugged and then you can get a digital key for a Wired game, mm. whatever you want, really. It's up to you. Um, so there we go. With that being said, we have some questions. And would you like to be the question readerer? Yeah, um, I don't think we're going to have time for all of them, but we'll take some forward to, right. to, to, to next week. Um, but I'm going to start off with a question that was asked last week, and we promised that we would revisit yes, it did. this yep. week. Okay. So it was a question from uh, Sora underscore Raven on Twitter, which was, uh, what undeveloped game idea do you regret not finishing or publishing due to the pandemic, lack of interest, resources, or people power? And, you know, <laughs> as, we said, as we said last week, um, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an answer. Um, there is a lot of. There are a lot of things that we we can't talk about because you never know if a project <laughs> will come back well, or, yeah, we'll come or, or so yeah. on. And mm-hmm. um, but there is one uh, that uh, that I've been given the okay to mention, and this was something that was um, conceptualized about five years ago uh, between Leo uh, Papa Z, yeah. um, you know, master of Wired. Um, and we were, um, we were on a trip, we were on a trip, uh, in San Francisco and this was, um, ahead of the Shaq Fu launch. And essentially we were over there to spend a day with Shaq doing interviews, skits, promo materials, yada, yada. So we spent a whole day with Shaq, right? So there was a a lot of downtime in the evenings and so on while we were there. And, um, a game that didn't come to fruition, but we were both very excited about mm. discussing was um, creating a baby metal game. Oh so for those that don't know, yeah, baby metal are um, a Japanese um, kawaii metal band, right? Uh, and it's made up of, uh, you know, uh, idol talent that was in, you know, pop based groups initially and so on. And then they, graduated and formed baby metal yeah songs such as give me chocolate uh megitsune yeah. uh karate yeah um, they, they, they've, they've done it all they're all bangers and they're not gonna lie um but the, the essentially the conceit of the band was three japanese girls uh singing along to metal based music with really good metal really good melody let's it, not lie it, no it is yeah yeah um and um one year um i was invited to the metal hammer awards because i think i I can't remember exactly why but we got given some uh tickets to go to metal hammer awards and this was this was a previous place um and the the the, uh the tickets for the show were little wooden slats that were in the shape of ouija boards it was very cool. cool yeah um but very heavy as well but anyway um, because of the work we were doing with uh, Metal Hammer at the time and Associate Brands, uh, we got given a really, really nice table right front and center of the show. Um, yeah. And I took along with me, uh, there's some people that I was working with, but then I also took uh, Sven from IGN, yeah. Fashion Davis, um, big Sonic fan, creator of Summer of Sonic. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we, we met up um, and we were talking about um, interesting music we've been listening to recently, and uh, we, we found that we were kindred spirits because it was like, oh, you know, we started talking about baby metal a lot, and we had a bit yeah. of a geek out. Sat down at the table, right at the front, right at the front in the middle. Sit down. Everything's about to kick off, and I just have a stretch, and I look behind me, and I look back, and I just lean to Sven. I'm like, Sven. <laughs> baby metal are directly behind us right now <laughs> like weird. kid you not what <laughs> do we do I'm like i don't know what do we do, do we go say hello? <laughs> it's like well it might look like we're cool people because we're like in front of them which made us feel like dicks <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. so anyway anyway i went to have a conversation <laughs> hello um as you do konnichiwa uh, or whatever yeah. um but at that time i met uh their manager as well yeah. traded cards had a conversation fast forward several years to me and leo having just spent a very dramatically tiring day with shack um I bet. And yeah it, yeah and it turns out that leo's down with a bit of baby metal um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and we started talking about that and said listen I'm, i met their manager you know why don't we why don't we look to make a baby metal game 
because you know the band the band has law about a fox guard and and all this stuff there like is, really detailed anime lore. level yep. backstory the idol kind the of era thing where they all yeah, have yeah. Like, yeah and we came with a, a whole concept of what this game could be how how it would work how yeah. it would function um who we would work with to make it happen i'd love to talk more about it but i don't want to spend too much time on it but um uh, unfortunately when we got to um start having the conversations this was the moment when uh, baby metal went through some changes where one of the members left yes uh, so that changes the whole law and concept of the story that we want to do and how it would all unfold and so on and then they created like the the chosen seven or something which was like people that would come and join and fill in for this person that was missing yeah um but yeah unfortunately we it, it couldn't go ahead uh, there were <laughs> too many complications, but there was this whole. Honestly, we we geeked out so much about of how this would this come together, work. how it would yeah, work, and so gosh. on. Yeah, what what a yeah. shame that that was fruitless because, like you yeah. say, it, it was it was mm. kind of a, a mashup of um. Yeah. I oh, know. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it because I'll be here all day. Well, for anyone that doesn't know Baby Metal, <laughs> they, they 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 are very video game esque. It's well worth a look yeah. in case you don't know. Their music itself is quite paradoxical. Oh, it's, yeah. it's interesting how many people are into baby metal because it's a bit like now i'm not saying stylistically musically it's like the prodigy but i mean like the prodigy is an interesting one because loads of heavy metal fans don't listen to like i don't know a drum and bass yeah. or whatever but they all like the prodigy a bit there's something about it. so the same with baby metal i mean i know there's shredding guitars but for the most part it is pretty pop isn't it the melodies yeah. and things are very very poppy you know yeah and uh almost dragon force-esque kind of poppy yeah. stuff isn't it and then uh, yeah, I mean, boom uh, again, I don't want to say too much, but the the, the music, the, the their music was going to play a big part in the gameplay as well. Yeah. Um. Right. Very, and very and fun. how and and certain special moves and and so on. Yeah. Right. But uh. Oh wow. Uh, well, that, that's it, well, that's a, honestly. It's beautiful. Saw a raven. That is a really good question. Like we said last week. So I hope. Yeah. Hopefully that was a good answer. That that's a deep, and it's an interesting story. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice one. All right. You I'm win f- a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Game. Game. Yeah. All right. Probably got time for what one more. So what what would you like to one more? Answer? Okay, okay. Um let's let's go with uh, a question from a returning fan. Mm-hmm. Uh at DK Chrissy on oh, Twitter. Yeah. The backbone uh, of this yeah, question yeah, yeah. section. Um so a cheeky little tune one. Uh what is your favorite film based on a video game? And two. Mm-hmm. Which game would you like to see have either a film or a series? Um, ah, if the question was like, which was your favorite film or series based on a video game? If I could get the series in, I'll tell you right now, just because I know I'm not allowed to, but I just say it just so I can say it. I love that Castlevania on Netflix. You know? That's so good. I love so it. Good. And I think it's actually a really good representation, especially season two. Yeah. yeah but but um, that season two arc is brilliant. Um, but honest, honestly, right? I'm not a big fan of the video game films thing, unless they're really bad. And I, and do you know what else is really good when it's really bad? A horror film, so a horror game. So genuinely, I know it's I know it's not original, and actually, I'm quite disappointed for myself by how obvious it is. But I do love that crap Silent Hill film. I do love it. I, the first one's great. I, I love, love it. it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I I love it. People tell me it's rubbish Sharon. all the time, and, and I'm just Sharon. like, yeah, Sean it's Bean's Sean accent being, being American. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yeah I yeah. said out loud almost instinctively because yeah. people didn't know what you're on about. I was like, Sean Bean's accent. That, um, and yeah. it, it's it's. And you know what? As well, sadly, well, not sadly, sorry, but but you know, interestingly, it it is a good. It, it, if you've not, if I was trying to show my partner whatever sat nail. Don't want to sit in front of the whole thing. I just like watch this film. You'll get the gist. It's a bit crap, but you'll get the gist of what it is. Airy yeah. sirens, cults, whatever. So I like that, to be honest. Like I, I do I do rate it. And what game would I like to see have a film or a TV series? Oh man. Um Dead Space would be good. Dead Space mm-hmm. would be good. I really like the idea of that. Um or Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Would you see it as a film or a series? Series, I suppose. Maybe one episode for each aspect of the ship that Isaac goes through. Because it's, yeah. it's level-based, isn't it? And there's always, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the way... That, so, so either that or Metal Gear Solid, isn't it? Metal Gear Solid, but based on the first uh, game, the Shadow Moses project in Alaska. No backstory rubbish. Just get on with it. I think I think it's a space show 
could work. Um, yeah. There's a really good, um, I forgot the name of it, but there's a, a Korean show on Netflix. Yeah. And it's set in space on a space station on the moon, maybe. Yeah. Um, and it's a horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like horror thriller drama. Oh, it's yeah. like a really interesting mix. Um, and that feels very dead spacey it's very cool and mm. i could see i could see it working um uh, cuz the, the the main character talks now in the uh in the remake in the remake exactly isaac but, isaac I, isaac yeah. yep that's the one so there's yeah. loads of like potential like and there's this whole you know there's a whole uh, thread with isaac's wife all the way through and ishimura yeah. this good good uh, iconography so i think that would work very well what about you what did you think of when you saw this uh my mind went straight to um, the original Tomb Raider film with Angelina Jolie. Yeah, I remember watching I it. I think because yeah. it, is, it is Tomb Raider enough. Yeah. Tells its own story. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it, the, the, the cast is good. It just, the cast is true. Daniel Craig's in there as well. Yeah, and yeah, doing yes. an American accent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I think that's an enjoyable film, and I was thinking it may not be as enjoyable watching it now, but when I had it on VHS as a time. child, yeah, as yeah. a youngun, yeah, it was one that I just keep. It was if there was a day that I wasn't watching Star Wars on on the the really cool trilogy VHS, VHS box set, yeah. Um, if I wasn't watching that, it would either be Tomb Raider, yeah, or the mummy one or the mummy returns yeah shout out to the mummy yeah what yeah. a film yeah yeah oh yeah yeah banging yeah hell yeah all right that's good that's good and what about a game that you... it's a bit uh, too much tough. there's loads of potential isn't there loads of potential yeah that, that it, it it is, is it, it is tough. i wonder if it's harder now that uh without being too disparaging to every western game but like a lot of them are very cinematic. Like, for example, right, God of War, yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. what? No, let's go. Let's let's talk real. Last of Us, yeah. The Last yeah. of Us is already a film. It is already a film. Yeah. It's almost an on the rails game. Like, I, 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 for example, I just moved into a new place, starting God of War again. Yeah, yeah. I already played like four or five hours of it. I started it again to so sort of. My partner wanted to watch it, so I put it on. Yeah, during that time. I sat and it's not, it's not a cut scene. It's, it's not a cut scene. It's, it's as it's happening. So I, I, you're sitting there just like, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And Last of Us is like that a little bit. So The mm. Last of Us show, although it's exciting, it's going to just surely be beat by beat, exactly the same thing. So like, yeah. you know, I wonder if that maybe slows people down. Like, it, you know, I mean, if you, like for God of War would just be the game. Exactly that. Um, yeah, because it's all one, one cut as well. It's like, yeah, exactly. So I don't know if you had anything in your back pocket, like a Nintendo I, IP or something. Yeah, actually, I think I, th I think that that's the route I'm going to have to go. Yeah. Um, and a series based in the world of the Legend of Zelda has nothing to do with Link or Zelda, and is surrounding the Legend of Zelda. There was um. There was a well-known now uh, Zelda game that never happened, which was in early design stage at Retro Studios, the folks yeah. who made uh, Metro Prime yeah. Yeah. and working on the Metro Prime 4. Um, and that was, um, I think it was all based around the concept of the, the Sheikah tribe. And, you know, and I, I think there's a lot you can draw from the world the and world, even if you yeah. even if you look at all the you know theory crafters out there deconstructing different parts of breath of the wild right yeah. you know about um that that tribe that is in the game that isn't really talked about right. that is mm -hmm. lost and now the iconography is featured in the the logo for the next zelda game and so on and yeah there's so yeah. much you can do with just little bits that aren't yeah, this this is an episode about Link, and and you know it's what is going on around it. Well, it's like a sort of the best way <clears> to describe <throat> that. It's like uh, you know that House of the Dragon had just come out. It's about Game of Thrones kind of family Targaryens, but it's so removed from it that people yeah. think, "Who wants this?" And then it, it absolutely it came out. That slammed. People loved it. People loved it. It did slam. Exactly. I I 
I was not ready to like that show. Um, mm. And it's phenomenal. It yeah. is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And I want more inside my soul. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I could not say. Better Call Saul is another one. It's just complete, yeah. like, how do you top break it bad? But it's something. There, I say it. It's a more big. Like, you watch all yeah. of that. Oh, sheesh. I so, started. I started watching The Wire again last night from episode one. I was, and again, that's one. That's gonna, one of the things where it's like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I I don't know how I'm going to react to this show now. It's been so long since I watched it, but you know, two episodes in, it's like, oh yeah, this is great. good to be back. I was. Yeah. For, for, I wanted to sort of end the podcast by letting people know that behind this door, I was going to joke that I've got Jeff Keeley here, who's working on. But it's actually, yeah, actually, it's just full of storage at the moment. And like, as soon as you walk <laughs> in that room. To the left, I've got all my books and the, the first book on that shelf is the big wire history book. So anyway, nothing completely nothing to do with video games. Sorry, DK Chrissy, for derailing that conversation. But uh, <laughs> t- t- <laughs> this, that's a Zelda series, but maybe I like, was the person who has to tend all the chickens in the village. Uh, yeah. And, you know, because that's a hard job. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Some idiots always throwing them around as well. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That, that'd be wicked. Listen, guys, it's December. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you're having a nice time. I hope your advent calendars have got good chocolates in them. Maybe you've got a bougie one with other things in there, like, I don't know, coffee or, like, cuddly toys or whatever. But listen, Lego. Lego. Yeah, exactly. Let us know what's in your advent calendar. You can tweet us at YP uh, for presents uh, or at Wired Unplugged. And if you want to ask us a question, you can get for a game. Pilk. <laughs> for Pilk. It was definitely Pilk. Yeah, if you've pilk. done the Pepsi Challenge, I'm interested to let us know, but maybe just yeah. don't try it. Um, we'll be back next week for the Game Awards special. Uh, Aaron, Blow out. Uh, Wish you, yeah, exactly. Listen, wish you well. All right. Everyone, thoughts and prayers for Aaron. Get well soon, mate. And see you guys next week. Bye bye. Word Unplugged.